Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So today we're going to be taking a look at another fantastic fan suggestion. Basically this one is how can we create some sort of object or pointer that can point to enemies outside of the view. So I've done something similar in one of my prototypes a while back but it wasn't exactly the same. In my case the pointer would point to um, some point of interest outside but it would always follow the mouse. In this case we need to clamp that to the outer border of our view. So that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I put something together really quickly. It's actually quite short. It happens in a step event. And then after I did this, I also looked on the internet to see what kinds of ideas and solutions other people have come up with. And there was actually a really fantastic one that I will be sharing with you at the end. Right, so if we open up our sprites, I've got this pointer over here. Very basic, it's green. And I've got my helicopter mechanics. We're going to be using that. And we're going to be hunting down these little mobs that are scattered around the game world. If I just open this up, and we zoom out, remove this grid, see there's a mob over there, and there's a mob over here, and so on. So we're going to be hunting down all those mobs, and it's going to be pointing at the ones that we can't currently see. So let's go ahead and create an object. Let's call it Object Pointer. Let's give it that sprite over there, and it just needs a step event because it's actually always going to exist in our game world. Wherever we have our helicopter or wherever we have the possibility of outside enemies, we want this pointer to track them. And ultimately what it's going to do is if the enemies are in the view, it's going to be invisible. And if they're not in the view, it's going to be pointing at them and it's going to be visible. Okay, so let's drag in some code. Firstly, let's get an object of interest. And this is going to be my instance nearest. Uh, to myself, X, Y, that's the helicopter, of object mob. Just like that. So this is going to return the identifier of the closest mob instance to us. Next, I need to work with my image angle of this pointer. So the image angle is going to be point direction X, Y it's going to be pointing to the object of interest X and the object of interest why? Very simple stuff. Now, next, I'm going to tell it to move towards point, and that's the object of interest X and object of interest Y. So it's going to want to like fly off like a missile towards this thing at a speed of 100, so it's not very noticeable. And that's when these next two lines of code come in, that is going to be very helpful for us to uh, prevent it from going out of the screen. So we're going to say X equals clamp the x coordinate to view x view of the zero view plus 100 pixels so it's not off the screen completely we've got 100 pixels of a, of a border I'd say we can tweak this at a later stage once we um, watching this pointer in action then we've got the maximum is going to be the view x view of zero plus the view uh, width of zero and minus 100 to give it a bit of padding too. Cool, so if you don't know what these are, view x view is basically this coordinate at the top left. So if I've got my room like this, straight over there, and I go to views, and I zoom out a bit, let's get rid of this grid. See this gray border? This is our view. And wherever this moves, because it's following our helicopter, the top left is gonna be your x, your view x view, and your view y view. So what I'm telling it to do is I'm clamping that x coordinate of that pointer to be within the x view coordinate plus 100, so it's going to be around here, and the maximum, so that's going to be the minimum, so I'm going to move any left, more left than 100 pixels um, away from the border, and the maximum is going to be this coordinate again, the x view, plus the width of the view, minus 100, so minus 100 pixels there. So here we've got, um, it's going to be within this region, 100 pixels there, and 100 pixels there is the border. So anything in between here is where it's going to be. And then we're going to do the Y coordinates. It's going to do the same to the Y. And that's how we'll constrain it within the view with a little border at the edge. Okay. So let me copy and paste this and clamp the Y coordinate. And this changes to Y view, Y view, and that's uh, the height. But otherwise, everything else is the same. Next, let's handle whether it's going to be visible or not. If the object of interest, this x coordinate, 
is greater than um, view x view of zero and the object of interest so x coordinates is less than view x view zero plus view w view zero okay so if the x is within sort of where we want to clamp it then next we need to also check the y i didn't combine these two into one statement because it was a bit long so i've just nested them a bit so if the y is greater than the y view it's also easier to understand when they're layered like this if the y is greater than the view y view and the y is less than the view y view plus the height that's this guy then i'm gonna say visible equals false otherwise otherwise it would have passed the first if and it would have failed the second if so visible equals true obviously we're out of view and i'm grabbing this else and putting it over here visible is true very good stuff so that's actually all it takes to create a pointer and have it in our view pointing at the closest instance of some sort of object so i mean i've got quite a few of these object mobs and as we fly around that little arrow is going to be pointing at this one or that one or it's going to be invisible or it's going to be there so let's go and save all this and test this out okay so let's take off and as we can see the pointer is already telling us there's something interesting down here so let's follow it and there we go it led us straight to the creature let's keep flying around see if we can get this pointer to point at other creatures that are closer there we go this guy is now closer to our player so it pointed him out just like that so in effect we have done the pointing to the end of the screen this object of interest can be anything it can be a coordinate it can be another player and in this case it can be another object so let's go ahead and head back to our solution there's something else i'd like to show you guys all right so now that i've shown you the way that i came up with let's have a look at something that's just as good and it's made by someone else so this is yellow afterlife he is a programmer and developer he specializes in game design also and i think he's from ukraine he's a really cool guy he's got some amazing tutorials at yell.cc so i'm going to put a link um, to this solution of his as well as his channel in general in the description please go check him out he's an amazing developer and he's got some really interesting concepts on his site so right over here he has got the exact concept pointing to an off-screen object uh, so this white thing here is the player and the player is pointing at this a goal i suppose to go to the next level um, so this says this immediate example demonstrates how to create a rather nice interface element being an arrow that points between an on-screen object, normally player, and an off-screen location that needs to be reached. In this case, arrow indicates exact position, direction to target and is made to clamp accurately to screen edges, preserving direction vector. To avoid confusion on behalf of players, such feature is specifically useful for exploration games where goals may need, uh, where goals may be at different distance from a player, and some guidance is required. Um, so, as you can see, his one is also one script, and here SRC is the source object, usually the player, DST is the destination object, exit, etc. Pad is distance between the pointing object and the view borders, and inner is the distance to goal under which the pointing object should start to fade out. It should be put into the step or end step event. So, if we go and um, copy this, and we go to our solution here to the pointer to the step event so I'm going to paste this in at the bottom and I'm going to comment out my solution and we can try and um, understand what he's got here so we've got the source X and Y we've got the destination X and Y you've got the differences so that's the the length between the two uh, there's your distance and here we do all kinds of magic if the distance is not equal to zero then we are giving a VX the value of the difference divided by different X divided by the distance, view Y divided by the distance. And um, here we change in the alpha of the object depending on how far away it is. And I think most of this is the clamping to the view. And then right at the end, we finally update the, um, the coordinates of that. So the image angle is set there, again point direction, and the coordinates are set here. So it's, it's a little bit more complex, but it also gets the same job done. So let's fire that up and let's see what it looks like.
Okay, so starting off, we can see the arrow is pointing in a similar direction. If we take off, let's follow this arrow and see where it leads us. Ah, there we go, right to a mob. And in this case, you see, there's the the padding between um, the arrow and the creature. And if we go up here, it should point to the other one. Somewhere around here, there he is. And so on and so forth. So those are the two solutions. You can pick whichever one you like. It doesn't matter if you think his one's better. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you've got any other fantastic suggestions, please let me know. I do like challenging myself to make these things a reality and even doing some research to find out what everyone else is doing to the same effect. If you like this video as well as many of my other videos, I'd like to invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. The project files for the solution can be found in the description as well as links to the Yellow Afterlife website where you can check out more of his content. We're getting closer and closer to 10,000 subscribers. I'd really like to thank everyone who has so far joined this journey. It's going to be really fun to give away a whole lot of really cool tools. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.